Our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. The Italian city of Naples was the dramatic setting for a summit to set Europe's future in space. From rocket launches to Mars explorers, everything was under debate, in particular money. Ministers from the 20 member countries of the European Space Agency, including newcomers Poland, had to decide which projects are funded and how. And the bargaining was intense. Tough. Tough. <laughs> Negotiations are never easy. You don't have much sleep. There are opposing points of view. Even if everything's prepared in advance, it's like we're starting all over again. But you just have to know that, not sleep for two and a half days and be persuasive. It is partly a game of poker, people gradually showing their cards. It's also a bit like mathematicians solving a set of simultaneous equations. But essentially, what they're trying to do is find the programs which have enough support from the different member states to be economically viable. The main activities in these days is to have a strategy of Europe for space, not the single strategy of each country. That trade-off between individual interests and the common interest came to a head in the debate over launches. Since the mid-1990s, Europe's Ariane 5 has dominated the satellite launch market. But the design hasn't evolved to meet demand, and it was crunch time in Naples to define how to update it. It makes for a politically charged atmosphere. The subjects in which the interests of individual countries are opposed are still open to debate. Those are the decisions where one choice favours the industry of one country against the industry of another, or determines a strategy which could change the balance of power between countries within the space agency. And in this case, the negotiations can only be carried out at a political level and only by the ministers themselves. The big question was whether to start developing a brand new Ariane, Ariane 6, or update the old one. If we're talking about launches, we're talking about billions. If we invest in an Ariane 6, which would be smaller, more flexible, we're talking about billions. For other programs, we don't talk about billions. Even the International Space Station is on another scale. While the French wanted to move quickly towards Ariane 6, the Germans pushed for a midlife update for Ariane 5, the so-called Ariane 5 ME. In Germany, we think that it makes sense to continue to develop Ariane towards an Ariane 5 ME with an improved upper stage that will give the launcher a better power capacity, more payload capacity, and we'd also have the possibility, thanks to this restartable upper stage, to fly in different orbits and to avoid too much debris during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere with a targeted re-ignition of the upper stage. Late-night negotiations led to a compromise. Ariane 5 ME will go ahead and be ready for liftoff in 2017. At the same time, initial studies to build Ariane 6 with a modular, flexible design would be launched. The French space minister was happy. Launches have a tremendous impact on the whole industry, and Europe needs to keep its industry a competitive industry, stimulated by the technological innovation that the space sector brings. There was more wheeling and dealing over Europe's role in the International Space Station. To keep their place on the ISS, the Europeans pay both cash and an in-kind contribution. For the moment, this means offering NASA the ATV transport vehicle to bring cargo to the ISS. In the future, the ministers agreed to provide the Americans with the engine and automatic docking system for their new human transport module called Orion. This module could be accepted by NASA as an entry ticket, and with that entry ticket for the ISS, we would also have the possibility to envisage the future of manned spaceflight with the Americans. 
The British came to the summit with fresh enthusiasm for space and a bulging wallet. The UK is increasing investment in ESA by 25%, up to 1.5 billion euros over the next few years. The decision is pragmatic. The UK doesn't believe in developing new launchers, so won't invest in them. But it will put money into telecoms projects that have a clear economic return. Yeah, telecommunications is one of the areas we're going to increase our investment in. Because quite simply, we think the satellite-based delivery of television, of broadband services, is a growing market. We want Britain to be at the cutting edge of it. We already make a, over a quarter of all the world's commercial satellites in Great Britain. And we think if we support the innovative development of new telecom satellites, we've got a great chance of maintaining or even improving our market share in the future. But what about the science amongst all this talk of money and market share? Europe's research satellites like Herschel, Planck, Rosetta and Bepi Colombo are world leaders in their fields. ESA member countries have to fund science, it's non-optional. However, the science budget won't budge from its current 508 million euros per year. One of the things at stake for the identity of ESA is to continue investing in the core scientific programs, in which each country pays according to its abilities, its GDP, where you don't say, as you do with the optional programs, I'll give so much money because I also want a return. But actually, for the next few years, the science programs won't have a real increase, taking into account inflation. Mars research did have a boost. Russia moved in to take America's place in the European ExoMars project. The Russians will provide ESA with rocket engines. The Red Planet consistently captures the imagination of the public and politicians. For sure, the Mars activities, it's, it's very exciting. And it's ex really exciting for the new generation. It's like a dream. In the past, we had the dream for the moon, and for the future, the next dream is for Mars. Overall, ESA members spend a small fraction of their country's budget on space, but the idea that space is a strategic investment that stimulates the economy is one that chimes with vote-hungry politicians, despite the timelines involved. Space missions are long term, but the industrial work of innovation in technology is done right now. And so in that sense, the jobs are created right now, and that allows the conciliation of the short-term interests of the politicians with the long-term interests of big space exploration projects. The European Space Agency left the Naples summit with the cash and political support for a 10.1 billion euro space program for the coming few years.